Hello there folks, Jose Rodriguez back again. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of things. Um, remember, lately I was uh, drawing ink out of these empty PGI 29 cards for the Pro 1 that I received from a friend who owns a photo studio and goes through these like there's no tomorrow. So he sends me the so-called empty, some of them still contain ink. And so I draw the ink out and I have been able to actually fill up nice two ounce bottles with it and I'm going to utilize that ink for my Pro 10 to fill these cards with OEM ink before I actually transfer over or convert over to the precision colors ink set for this printer. Now one experiment that I'm going to be doing is because the Pro 1 also contains two more extra colors than the Pro 10 and that is a dark gray and a light gray and Essentially, they're the same composition, they just contain more or less pigment than the regular gray ink that this printer uses. So there's three grays that the Pro 1 utilizes, and that by itself provides you with incredibly smooth tonal graduations. So the Pro 1 and the Pro 1000 is capable of doing that. All right, so my plan is to because gray is probably the fastest color or the one that is used at a, the greatest rate of usage, in other words. I'm going to go ahead and custom mix these two, the dark and the light. And by doing swatches with a Q-tip on photo paper, I will be able to match them to the gray one. And once I do that, then I will have a much greater gray volume. And this is acceptable. You can do this. A lot of the printing or third-party ink companies that sell you ink, believe it or not, are doing this. All right, they actually prepare special batches and they match and they sort of calibrate the colors with the, among the whole ink set. They calibrate them so that they work properly together. Yellow is not all yellow. Magenta is not all magenta. Cyan is not all cyan. It depends where the source comes from. And so some cyan's might actually be spectrally slightly different than other sources of cyan. So it's very difficult to do a proper matching so that your ink set provides the perfect color matching to, say for instance, OEM, which is what you're trying to actually achieve. All right, so this is one thing that I've been working on. The secondly is I spoke with Precision Colors and they just might be interested in pursuing the possibility of creating an ink set. They already have this ink set, so all they have to do is come up with a dark gray and a light gray. Inkjet Carts already has that. I don't know what they did, whether they used some of the inks already available for some of their uh, IPF large format Canon printers or not. I don't know what they did, but they do sell an ink set for the... Why am I pointing to that? For the Pro 1. There I go again. And basically what they're asking you to do is just refill your own cards and disable ink monitoring, which is a horrible idea to do because that will throw the printer into thinking that it's always empty and it's all, every time you actually turn the printer on, it thinks you're initializing new ink cards. Say for instance, when you change an ink card and you get a purge cycle, it's going to do this perpetual purge cycles and you're just going to waste ink like there's no tomorrow. So it's really not recommended that you do that. So what I'm doing is I'm going to remove the chips. I'm going to actually throw them in little baggies, 12 little baggies, and mark them. Because there might be a time where these will actually be resettable. We just don't know yet. Um, the market just hasn't you know, really been enough of it for the Pro 1 to allow or to cause, say for, ex for instance, Red Setter, Resetter Company, to investigate and create a resetter for this type of uh, chip. So at this point, they're useless, but I'm going to save them anyway, so that I'll have them in the future if needed. And it's only going to take up a little box, so it doesn't matter. All right. So what I'm doing is I actually went to a friend of mine in England, and he sent me a set of chips that I think I showed you earlier. And these are single-use chips that are available to China. They work perfectly. The only thing is you need to replace the originals with the single-use chips. They don't quite fit because the back of the chip, the area where all of the little microelectronics reside, has a little bubble of black protective resin. This is the same thing with all Canon compatible 
chips and Canon single-use chips or auto-reset chips for any other Canon printer. They don't quite fit the original cartridge, and that's the problem. Well, all I had to do was just machine away a little tiny spherical dimple. And I have a milling machine, I set up a jig, and I knocked out a job of 12 carts in, in about a couple of minutes. And so I will pre-machine these, then we will attach single-use chips, and we will refill these carts, and we will have them for sale, hopefully if, it's, if this all pans out, at uh, Precision Colors website. Or I will sell them, it depends. So that will be awesome. Now, you can already get single-use carts from China off of eBay between 9 and $12 a piece. We just don't know what inks they're using, folks. And it's really kind of a... It's not that I want to drum up business for myself or for precision colors, but you really have no idea where those inks come from. And so I would rather have a reputable source of ink. Ink is the, the main ingredient here. So I would rather have a reputable source of ink, a known source of ink, that we know has been already calibrated by us. Profiles will have been made by us, and you would be able to then have as good an experience with those cards. Now, once you end up using your cards, you could buy single-use chips from us, or you can buy the inks from us, and you can refill them yourself in they will be held just by a little dab of silicone. So they just remove it, apply a little dab of silicone, and reattach your new chips to it. And then, unfortunately, at this point, they're just single use. So nobody has any other option. No one. Your only other option is, again, to buy compatible cards, which are not really the best in the world, and throw them out. The best way to go is with OEM that have been refilled properly. The reason I say refilled properly is because it's not as easy. As some of the, I'm looking for a syringe tip. I don't have it here. It's not as easy as you might think. It's not as easy as some of the other Canon cards. The entry port or exit port, I should say, is actually has a gap right directly under it. And the actual bag that's inside, there's an air gap. And so if you do not insert that tip and make sure that that little slightly tapered tip actually seals against the secondary entry point of that bag, you could literally flood the inside of the card with ink. Okay, so it's a little bit touchy. You really, it's a blind process. You don't know what's actually happening. So it's not as easy to refill as one might think. So it's a technique that you have to learn. If you choose to do so yourself, you have to learn this technique yourself. And I will have probably unlimited empties that I can sell to anyone who wants to try this process. And again, with the inks that you can purchase from either Precision Colors in the future or at this point from inkjet cards, and they also sell you the little refilling tip. And I will be creating videos on how to do this, and I will be also showing you how to attach the single use chips, or single use, uh, one time use, I should say, chips that you buy from China. All right, so that's the second project. By the way, in a few days I will have 300 more of these suckers. And I'm just going to continue extracting ink from them right here. So I will have enough ink to do whatever experiments I feel like doing with this printer without having to worry about running out of OEM inks because I'm not going to be buying carts for this printer. They just cost too much. All right, now that's where I'm at now with physical projects. And now I want to talk a little bit about. Um, Somebody posted, literally just stated, one way to kill your printer is to use third-party inks. First of all, that's a hell of an accusation to make, especially since you really didn't identify what brand printer you were talking about, or, you know, accusing third-party inks from causing a homicide against. So, let me just delve into this a little bit. Here's what happens a lot. There are only a few really truly reputable companies that sell third-party inks and cartridges. And I, when I say cartridges, I'm referring to Epson because if you have a Canon, you really should not be using third-party ca cartridges unless, unless you are using a printer 
that has stationary carts. In other words, they do not ride on the printhead carriage back and forth. Stationary carts. That would be the Pro One. So yeah, those those uh, compatible carts that you buy from China, they're possibly actually beginning with these. Okay, and they're, they've been refurbished and they've had uh, the single-use chips installed and pre-filled with God knows what ink. Okay, so is the cartridge itself, the physical body of the cartridge itself, is probably okay in the realm of compatible cards. Any other type of compatible cards, especially the ones that utilize sponges, I would not recommend at all. Even the ones for the Pro 10, I would not recommend. The best way to go, if you can refill your originals, why would you want to use anything else? Because that's the most reliable use of cartridges you can actually, you know, do. Use your originals. They are designed to flow perfectly well. They are designed to flow and, and, and give your printhead the, the ink that they need to stay cool and not burn out. Anything else that is a little bit dicey or iffy, why would I, why would I you know, put my printhead to uh, that kind of Russian roulette, in other words? Why would I want to take a chance? Okay, so now let's talk about inks. So the guy's referring to inks, not necessarily cartridges. He's saying that the inks themselves will kill your printer if you do not use OEM inks. Well, who am I to talk? I use OEM inks from all my Epsons. I mean, look at all the ink that I have. But you know what? I haven't had a single bad experience with third-party inks on any of my Epsons. And those third-party inks come from reputable companies. All right, so I'm not buying stuff from China. I'm not buying stuff that has no description whatsoever, only fancy claims. And you don't know what the actual source of the inks were. Give it an example. Often what happens is when you buy compatibles, even for Epson, and Epson's are very forgiving, so this might not be a problem so much, but you wouldn't want to do this on a Canon. Okay, so you buy, say, inks for the R1900, you're expecting to get pigment inks, aren't you? No, you get dye-filled cartridges with, I don't know what the heck they put in there. I don't know whether they've actually mixed a little bit of this and a little bit of that to get this color. Yeah, so see what I'm saying? That's not good. So you buy inks from Ink Owl, Precision Colors, Inkjet Cards, Inkjet Fly, Cone Inks, or Inkjet Mall, Ink Supply, um, Republic, Ink Republic, all of those companies that are based in the United States and Canada are reputable and give you excellent inks that you can actually rely on. They've actually done the work for you. Now, anybody else who claims that they have inks for this and that and you end up getting the same lot number, meaning they're using the same inks for all kinds of different printers? No, sir. Magenta for the R2000 is not the same magenta as for the R3800 or the 2880. Colors are actually slightly different. Uh, magenta is not always magenta. Cyan is not always cyan and vice versa. So that's a lot of hoopla about that and you really just cannot really rely on that so be very weary of any company that makes these perfectly matched to OEM excellent performance great longevity really let me see your Wilhelm lab results on that ink no there is no such thing they do not do that it's just false claims uh, if you see you know complete set of um, eight cards for the are 2000 for $15 and they're compatibles. No, don't go for that. It's, you're going to be sorry. Do not go for that. R2000 is lucky we have these cheap original ink sets or cart sets going on on eBay still. You know, go for the best you can get. Any other printer, for instance, that you see is super bargain for compatible carts. Carts for $2, $3 a piece. It's junk, okay? Really, it's junk. It's like you have a Lamborghini and you're feeding it the cheapest, you know, regular gas there is, all right? And the cheapest, lowest grade oil there is. Don't do that. You have a Rolls Royce of a printer, don't feed it, you know, garbage. Feed it good inks. So don't fall for all of these claims on eBay. I buy a lot of stuff on eBay, but it's always OEM, okay? I think I just went way too far with this. 
and more than I intended to. But, you know, I'll leave you with the simple uh, suggestion is that third-party inks by themselves will not kill your printer. That's the person stated. You will probably kill your printer doing other things you shouldn't be doing, like lack of use or just general tinkering with it. I know. Guilty. Right here. Guilty. So I know it kills a printer a lot easier than just, you know, using good third-party inks. I have yet to have anything bad happen to any of my printers that I can attribute to the actual inks and not to me personally. It's always me personally. Except for maybe that 3800 that's dead over there still. Yeah, you. Alright, so I know this went on too far. Okay, so, and I'm tired as hell. I've had a, practically a week with my, my sister's been here out of town and I've been uh, planning the grandson's birthday with my daughter and parents and, and so on. So it's been kind of a whirlwind last week. And uh, we said goodbye to my sister yesterday evening, and now I'm back to normal. And I've been taking it easy today and trying to rest and trying to revive myself. But uh, everything's good. All right, I want to leave you with one last little thing. I have been putting the uh, little um, donate or support little card thingy on the upper right corner at the beginning of my videos. If you feel like donating a buck or two. Just go ahead and click on that, and it'll lead you over to the donation page. And uh, at work, they would actually hit one dollar or five dollars, and then when they click next, it would just sit there rotating and not doing anything. I tried it on both my computers. I have a uh, Windows 8 and a Windows 7, and it worked on both. I tried it on my tablet, which is an Android, and it worked on that. But I think it has to do with uh, possibly the browser. I think the person who wanted to donate and could not was on uh, Firefox, the latest Firefox. So I'm using Internet Explorer, so it seems to work well with that. So if you feel like you know, if you feel like you got something out of this rambling, and you want to throw a dollar so that I can continue doing what I do, go ahead and uh, maybe switch browsers momentarily or try some other device or whatever. See if it works. If not, you can always throw me a couple bucks on PayPal. And that'll That'll help. I'm, I'm about, um, I'll tell you guys, I, I'm closer to getting that P800, which is my next project. And I talked to Precision Colors, and yeah, they're receiving their first batch of refillable cards with auto reset chips. Woo! I'm so excited. All right, the next video I will do, I'm going to open this little box that I received from a good guy over in the UK. And he just got a P800, and he sent me. Everything he had left on the Pro 3880. And I think I have some carts that are not empty, so that I'll be able to reset them. And I got some uh, excess OEM inks that he had been collecting from large cartridges. So we'll open up that in the next video. Okay, that's enough. Please like, please share, please subscribe. Until the next time, happy printing as always, and bye-bye.